Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another ad hoc video. So today we're going to be talking about this article called Did UCLA Just Cure Baldness? And it's going to be concerning our favorite company that we've been talking about now called Pelage Pharmaceuticals, PP405. That's their drug that they're currently making. And at the time of recording this video, it is February 6th, 2025 at 3.38 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the United States of America, where I am. Anyway, if we go to the clinical trial website from the United States NIH website, we can see over here that the study completion is actually right now, right? It's stated that the study has already completed as of February of 2025, but the primary completion where I guess they've mostly collected, you know, most of the data and they've finished, you know, enrolling all subjects and assessing them, that was back in December of 2024. But in any case, going back to the article, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to read the key part. So it says over here, quote, UCLA scientists have now identified a small molecule that, when prompted, can waken long slumbering but undamaged follicles. The researchers have dubbed this transporting molecule PP405. In scientific terms, the PP405 molecule is isolated and applied to a protein in the follicle stem cells that keeps the cells dormant. This inhibits the protein and the stem cells are moved to awaken. Lab work on the molecule has been going on for almost a decade. In the first human trials conducted in 2023, researchers found that application of PP405 as a topical medicine onto the scalp at bedtime for a week produced promising results. So, you know, it seems as if that things have been moving well, right? And these UCLA scientists, UCLA is a really, really good university in California, um, being William Lowry, Dr. William Lowry, professor of molecular uh, biology, and you know, it says over here, cell development biology, um, and all his other colleagues, they were the ones that kind of made some pretty foundational discoveries. And I'm gonna go to one of their papers that they made. This paper titled, quote, lactate dehydrogenase activity drives air follicle stem cell activation, unquote. And you can see it's Dr. William Lowry and his colleagues. Um, some of those colleagues being here, if I scroll all the way down on the Pelage Pharmaceutical website, um, you can see Heather, for example. She's also listed as a co-author from that paper. But as you can see, they're all co-founders of the Pelage Pharmaceutical Company, with Dr. William Lowry being the president and the co-founder as well. So essentially, they made some pretty groundbreaking discoveries that found that lactate itself can activate hair follicle stem cells and kind of transition them from a dormant follicle, right, from the dormant uh, telogen phase and push them into the antigen phase, right? And they made observations that when tr transitioning between telogen to antigen, there is an increase in lactate levels, right? As well as lactate dehydrogenase, the enzyme itself too. So that points to some key, you know, sort of, um, you know, understandings or hints, right? If lactate dehydrogenase is being upregulated at the time of antigen, lactate dehydrogenase is an enzyme that, you know, does a specific task. It breaks down something and turns it into lactate. And what they found is that they can manipulate the cellular environment such that they can create this small molecule called, called PP405. But in this case, in this particular study, they used, um, I think they used UK, let me check real quick. I think they used UK 5099, as well as another sort of what we call a mitochondrial pyruvate carrier protein inhibitor. Um, I forgot what it was, but it, I think it becomes like an R or something. But they use these mitochondrial pyruvate carrier protein inhibitors to prevent the the um, this protein that's responsible for taking pyruvate into the mitochondria, right? But by blocking this protein, they cause for pyruvate to build up in the cytoplasm of the of the uh, of the cell, right? And as pyruvate begins to build up, it seems to trigger some sort of, you know, system, internal system that causes for the upregulation of lactate dehydrogenase that comes in 
and converts the pyruvate into lactate. And it is that abundance of lactate that, sh that seems to trigger the dormant hair follicles from a telogen dormant phase, right, into an anagen growth phase. It kind of switches the hair follicle engine back on. So once those hair follicle stem cells are, you know, up and running again, they can proliferate, right? Meaning they can, you know, duplicate, but they can also differentiate. And that's what we're trying to observe here. If those hair follicle stem cells differentiate, because if the hair follicle stem cells differentiate, they can turn into the dermal papilla cells. They can turn into keratocytes. They can turn into various fundamental cell types that's important for hair growth. And that's pretty cool. And that's the mechanism of action that they're playing on. But we're also waiting for news if whether or not they're phase 2A, because right now they're at, you know, they've completed their phase 2A, we're waiting for them to come out with some news that sort of talks about, what, you know, their results, right? What have they observed in this sort of uh, clinical trial, this phase 2A trial? And do, do these results necessitate an extended phase 2, you know, trial, maybe a phase 2B? Or do they have enough results or are they confident enough to just jump to a very large and robust phase three, you know, clinical trial. And in that clinical trial, what are they going to be doing? Are they just going to be looking at, you know, PP405 over here? It says PP405 at a 0.05% concentration as a topical gel. Are they going to be using a stronger concentration of PP405 against 0.05% PP405 against placebo? Are they going to make it go head to head against, you know, conventional hair loss treatments like finasteride or maybe more compared uh, being, you know, or more comparable being minoxidil as it's, you know, as these drugs are sort of in a class of growth stimulants, are they going to do that? We can only speculate, right? But looking at the language of the article itself, if we look over here, um, we can see that towards the end of the article, they quote Dr. William Lowry as saying, quote, FDA approvals always take some time as they should, unquote. They, and Lowry goes on to say, but quote, it will be worth waiting for, unquote. So <laughs> it sounds like he's pretty confident in the mechanism of action that is PP405, right? Saying that, oh, I mean, you know, it'll take some time, but I can, you know, this will be worth the wait. That must mean, or in my opinion, that it's likely to mean that they have observed some pretty promising results from their recent phase 2A clinical trial. There's another point of concern here, though, that I think I talked about in my video that I did on PP405, the very, very long video that I did. And this article kind of touches on it. The article says, um... Laurie and his team were concerned, I'm quoting the article, that the PP405 small molecule might kill all of the follicles. They quote Laurie as saying, quote, but we were happy to be wrong about that, unquote, he says. So why might this be the case? Because I was on uh, the subreddit Tressless and I saw some people freaking out about that. Well, by playing on that sort of system where they prevent pyruvate from reaching the mitochondria, we know that, you know, the mitochondria, what is the meme? The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. You know, mitochondria provides, um, you know, energy, right? ATP. And it, it actually allows for work to be done in a cellular process. So if you're preventing it getting ATP, that sort of very, you know, the maximal you know, adazine triphosphate, the maximal energy source, if you're preventing the pyruvate from reaching the mitochondria, then that means you're potentially having more instances of inferior forms of energy like adazine diphosphate or adazine monophosphate, ADP and AMP, and lower instances of ATP, right? Adazine triphosphate. So by messing with the energy metabolism, of the hair follicle stem cells, maybe there's a chance that you can possibly, you know, kill the follicle itself, right? There, it doesn't have any energy. You're messing with its literal energy metabolism. It could cause the follicles to kind of shrivel up and die. 
But it seems as if that wasn't the case. And, you know, that's been observed in their preclinical trial results, as well as even the phase one results over here on their website. This is one of their hidden pages on Pelage Pharmaceutical um, or PelagePharma.com. And it shows over here uh, how when PP405 is applied, and this is a human hair follicle, what you can see is a biomarker response in the hair follicle after 24 hours, as they say over here. And conceivably, this is this purple color or blue, whatever your eye sees it as, the colored area over here. Um, it shows that there's some sort of stimulation. I think this is the lactate dehydrogenase or lactate itself. But it shows that there's some sort of response that's being, you know, observed or uh, initiated due to the intervention of PP405. And if we go to the study, we can see similar markers. Um, let me go to the page like over, over here, right? Lactate dehydrogenase activity. You know, they note it being very abundant at the bulge and it actually, you know, being a marker of antigen as that activity goes up. So by, you know, messing with that system, you're, you're also playing with something called the internal stress response. Let's see if I have the article up over here. This is from a different set of researchers, but essentially they use a similar molecule like that I talked about before, similar to PP405, a mitochondrial pyruvate carrier inhibitor called UK5099. Let's just open up this article real quick. And when using UK5099, they, they tapped into a sort of internal system called the integrated stress response that essentially when there's a prevention of mitochondrial pyruvate carrier from reaching the mitochondria you know there needs to be some sort of there needs to be some sort of energy source right and because you know this sort of stress response is initiated mitochondrial pyruvate carrier being prevented from getting to the mitochondria, a protein called ATF4 begins to sort of build up in the cell, right? And ATF4 signals to, you know, certain genes in your nucleus where your DNA is, it signals for certain genes to be activated, right? Because now pyruvate, it can reach the mitochondria, so it's building up in the cytoplasm of the cell. So, ATF4, at least in this particular study, it activates certain genes, right? And these genes seem to be responsible for regulating lactate dehydrogenase. And lactate dehydrogenase is an enzyme that breaks down pyruvate. So this enzyme builds up, right? And it, it, uh, you know, it breaks down the pyruvate that's building up in the cytoplasm. And then that pyruvate turns into lactate. And it is that abundance of lactate that signals, right, as they, you know, observed here in this uh, in this paper, that signals to the hair follicle stem cells that, okay, it's time to grow again. It's time to proliferate. It's time to differentiate into hair. And that is, you know, what they're playing on, right? Now, they didn't know whether or not playing with that system, right, messing with mitochondrial metabolism would grow the hair, which is why they're investigating. Um, but it seems as if it worked. And it seems as if the hair follicles can uh, just run on, um, you know, inferior forms of uh, energy, like ADP and AMP. And maybe even lactate is a good enough energy source as it is, right? So this is all pretty interesting stuff. And we're just, you know, we're really waiting for these results. They actually had a conference, I think, in San Francisco. It's called Advancing Innovation in Dermatology. And the president, one, or, or sorry, the CEO, the chief executive officer of Plus Pharmaceutical, was there to give a talk. Now, unfortunately, I don't think they recorded it. <laughs> so we don't know, you know, if they talked about, you know, their phase two clinical trial results or any important information. But um, just judging on this particular article from UCLA, it does seem as if the team has some pretty, you know, promising results, right? Because why else would Dr. William Laurie say, quote, 
but it will be worth waiting for. I think he's, you know, he's feeling a bit happy about the results. So now the next step, like I said, is maybe a phase 2B, or maybe they're going to go to a phase 3. But judging on how fast they're moving with this particular, you know, small molecule, I think uh, they, they see something promising. And it could be, you know, if everything goes well, 2028, 2029, that this particular drug gets to the market. Hopefully they have a pretty cool name other than PP405. Maybe they, you know, they have a cool brand name like uh, Rejuva or, or something like that. But in any case... That's it for this video. Hopefully it's been informative and hopefully you guys like this sort of off the cuff kind of recording and reporting of the news. But in any case, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Is this AI, by the way? Is this like, <laughs> is this dude AI over here? If you're looking at the screen? Anyway, sorry for derailing. See you in the next video. Bye guys.